today is the last in our series that we've been working on, uh, in, which deals with relating with one another. And I know you've learned a lot, correct? Mm -hmm. That would be the correct answer. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Minute recap. The first service, we talked about empathy. How we can't make our conditions equal to everyone in the world, but we can make our brotherhood or our energy toward them a state of equality. We can welcome them and create safety with them without having to change them or save them. Empathy is the fabric that weaves us together without asking us to change. So if you need to review that, it is on YouTube. Then Pat Patrick talked about patience. And patience was allowing another the time they need to learn and allowing ourselves the time we need to learn. Patience. Last week we talked about kindness. We learned the Sorelli method of kindness. When we start expecting success and we stop protecting from failure, I bet you could do that. Mm -hmm. Did anybody have an opportunity last week? All right. So this week, we're talking about uh, beholding the Christ in one another. We all believe we are children of God, yes? Yes. Okay. So I wanted to just start with a, a story, a human story. Um, I guess it was November, and I share this with you, not to be profound, but to maybe uh, clarify something you might have gone through as well. But about November, um, my father, who's on the other side, he crossed over, uh, came and gave me a message. So I called my sister, and I said, hey, Judy. And she goes, well, hey, how are you? And I went, oh, my God, she never asks how I am. I said, I'm fine. And you're, how are you? Good. And I said, well, you know, Dad came in yesterday and gave me this message I wanted to share with you. And she goes, who, who is this? I said, well, it's, it's, she goes, this isn't Aaron? I said, it's Cindy, your sister. <gasps> oh. Oh. I said, well, I wish I was Aaron. <laughs> and I said to her, that is the nicest you have ever been to me on the telephone. Well, that's not true. <laughs> oh, yes, it is. Oh, yes, it is. And then we, I fulfilled my destiny. I gave her the message that my dad had given. And that was that. <laughs> we were off the phone again. But her tone went from, hey, to oh, you. <laughs> so I'm very clear. And I love my sister, and she loves me. But there is absolutely nothing that she wants from me. There is nothing I can give her. There is nothing that she needs from me. She knows who I am. She knows what I do. She knows how I live but it does not fit in her world. So, do you hear what I'm saying? So, there was no need to talk to me. There's just no need. Because there's no, nothing that we need. So Spirit asked me to share with you that from her perception, I have absolutely nothing to offer. And how we view another dictates our energy exchange. So she knows who I am, she knows I love God with all my heart, but she does not need that in her world. Am I okay with that? Yes. So the first thing that I wanted to bring to our awareness is that idea of perception. How we are perceived and how we perceive others dictates how we engage with them. And how often do we see others based on our needs only? Do I need you for something? Or do we miss, dismiss people who we have no need for? How many people do you dismiss because you have no need for them? I mean, people that you would meet on the street, I have no need to talk to them. I have no need for them. They have nothing to offer me, and we dismiss. It's almost automatic. Are you guys with me? So how we perceive people based on our needs can limit our ability to interact with them. So, Spirit said, do we always look at someone based on how they would fit into our world or what they bring to our world? Even as metaphysical Christians, do we stop seeing their unique divinity when they are not meeting our needs? So, I have asked 
um, a few of our little IQ volunteers uh, to help us demonstrate perhaps an idea that may not be true to your home, but maybe you know somebody like this, where we have forgotten to look with a clear perception. So, Patrick, if you'll set this down. <coughs> oh. I just got in here. Give me a break. You're always just picking on me. Uh, listen, I'm not on your case. Um, how about this? Uh, hello, how are you? How's the weather? Uh, how, how, are you going to get around to fixing that? Nag. <laughs> nag. Nag. It's all you do is you give me a hard time left and right. Ah. No, 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 no. Reminding you once in six months is not the definition of nagging. Reminding me once every six months for five years is 100% nagging. Oh my God. Good. What is wrong with you? I just want you to fix a couple of things around here. Pull your weight. You act like I don't do anything. Every t you know, I'm crazy busy, right? Every second, every chance I get, to do something around here, we end up having to go to your mother's! Oh! oh, oh. <laughs> do not bring my mother into this. <sighs> Dear God, he is your son. You need to do something with him before I have to. Controlling. <laughs> demanding. I can't do anything right. It's like, you make my life miserable. Oh. Uh, miserable? Miserable? I'm going off on my line. Miserable! <laughs> if you weren't so busy nagging, you might be able to do it. <laughs> miserable? Yeah, miserable like everything you're saying, you're spewing out, you're calling forth a thousandfold. Well, I have good intentions, so I'm calling that a thousandfold, my good intentions. Uh, that's good intentions? This slime you're spewing out, those are your good intentions? <sighs> Oh, 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 oh. Okay, God, I call forth divine intervention for your son. <laughs> Get off of me! I'm mad! I have a right to be mad! She never stops! You heard her? Okay, okay, okay. Mother, Father, God. I call forth divine intervention, and I ask for David to the highest Christ in divine nature. His Christ in nature to be fully present in his body. Okay. Let his love flow through you. All right. Let's start over. Okay. Hey, how was your day? Pretty good. <laughs> Did anybody see somebody they know? No. No. David and Jenna. Spirit asked us to do this little demonstration for you. And thank you guys, that was great. <laughs> And of course, as things are done around here, they got scripts this morning. So, yeah. <laughs> we love improv. Yeah, improv with script. So, this is what they wanted us to, to perceive. Jana's character was perceiving her need as greater than any love she might have had for him. And she was perceiving her need as paramount. And so, he was not doing what she needed him to do. Therefore, where is his value? How often do we diminish the value of someone we love dearly into zero? In shred them into zero. Just because from our perception, they're not meeting our needs. Okay, a couple of you. <laughs> David was not doing what, he was, what she needed. He was supposed to do what she needed. When she asks for divine intervention, divine intervention is always subject to the ability of the person to receive it 
or to their desire to receive it. So I wanted you to see that very clearly. When Adriana the angel came over and David goes, get off me, I have a right to be mad. So divine intervention comes in through the consciousness of what is currently existing. And if there is a validation of I have absolute, absolutely right to be where I am by God, and I ain't budging, can you see how divine intervention has little to no impact? <coughs> I mean, it takes her attention off of you, but they start fighting that angel. But when she asked that David's Christ in nature be present in his body, that is always received. And why? Because that's the core of who he is. <coughs> Think about that beautiful power. When I call forth my Christ in nature, I'm calling forth that strength and divinity of the God I am. When I call forth your Christ in nature, I'm calling forth that strength and divinity of who you are. It is in you. You cannot fight it. And when you do that for another person, it immediately shifts them into that space of honor and divinity. Because you're honoring them. I'm calling forth your Christ. Did you see how they shifted immediately? And if, it's, if this was a true metaphysical couple fighting, it would have gone on a wee bit longer. You know, you're not acting like God, well, neither are you. Well, you need to be God, well, so do you. Let's pray, dang it. <laughs> <laughs> but then what happens after the prayer, the Davis Christ is in him, Janice Christ is in her, and then what about what needed to get done? It may be another six months before they even see it again. Because it's not important. If it truly is important, they will say to one another, let's hire somebody. <laughs> you know, if it truly is important, they'll open their eyes and go, all right, let's find somebody to do this. Because you don't have time and I do need it done. Do you see? But oftentimes these things that escalate, 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 really sit. Because it's perception. Perception. So when you see the Christ in another, when you see the divinity in another, it is almost impossible to view them as any less than you, isn't it? It's impossible to view them as less wonderful, less powerful, less radiant than you are. So when we recognize the divinity or Christ in nature in another, we don't want to force them or to dictate or to demand. This is replaced with the desire to create or originate. To create something with them, to originate with them, or just to honor them. I behold the Christ in you is a silent calling forth that you can use with anyone at any time because it truly honors them. It lets you move into a spiritual moment. Even when you're dealing in matter, even when you're negotiating something in matter, just by calling forth the Christ of that person you are with shifts it to a spiritual perspective. And then if you're in a spiritual perspective, what are you looking for? God. Magic. God. Manifest good. This is going to be amazing. I don't need to worry about this even if I'm sitting in a court or dealing with something that seems in the world of man insurmountable. It's magic. So I wanted to share with you a scripture from the Aquarian. Did you all get it from the little demonstration? Mm -hmm. yeah. A few of you saw it, your neighbors. <laughs> <laughs> and I came up here without my glasses. So I shall paraphrase. Um, this is uh, chapter 91, and Jesus is um, at the healing fountain, where they're probably all too strong. He's at the healing fountain. Oh, I'm getting glasses. <laughs> oh, no. Let's see. Oh, yeah, those aren't mine, but I will take them. <coughs> He's at a healing fountain. Thank you, Doug. And um, there is a man that's wounded and cannot get to the healing, healing fountain. And the story is that once every so many wants, an angel will come and stir the water. And when the angel stirs the water, whoever's around the healing fountain, the first ones in get healed. And Jesus goes to this healing fountain. There's a man. I tell you this story often, but the Spirit wanted me to share a new aspect of it with you. There's a man waiting, and he cannot move. And Jesus says to him, "Who?" Jesus says to him, My brother, man, would you be healed? 
And he said, I earnestly desire to be healed, but I am helpless. And when the angel comes, there's no one here to help me. And Jesus said, what kind of God would send an angel so that only a few could be healed? He said, this is not God. God treats every man just the same. No one has any better chance in heaven's healing fountain than another. And this is what he says is when you pay attention, start making notes in your brain. The fount of health is in your soul. It has a door locked fast. The key is faith. And everyone can have this key and may unlock the door and plunge into the healing fount and be made whole. The fount of health is in your soul. The door has a key and you have the key to unlock the door. And then the man looked up and said, give me this key of faith. And Jesus said, do you believe what I have said? According to your faith it shall be done. Arise, take up your bed, and walk. And the man did. Mm -hmm. But I want you to hear the words. We have, as Christians, historically interpreted that is, do you have faith in what I have said? Do you believe in me? Do you believe in me? <clears throat> and that is not what Jesus said. Jesus said, it is in you. Can you believe that? It is in you. The Christ is in you. The fount is in you. The key is in you. You have to have faith. Can you believe that? And the man said yes, and he was healed. Turning us to the Christ within, opening the Christ within, letting that man's divine I am Christ come forward in his body to believe, and then he can accept the healing. How many stories have we interpreted, oh, I need to believe in Jesus, the man, Jesus, son of God, Instead of, I need to believe in what he's saying, I am Son of God, I need to have faith. Do you see and feel the difference in it? So, according to your faith, believe in God. The other uh, um, story that was very similar is uh, one chapter over, it's 92, and it's again a beautiful story I use a lot. A little child goes to Jesus, and her father is an alcoholic. And she said, My dad's an alcoholic, he's in bed, he takes all my mom's money, she works very hard, and he drinks it away, and, and we love him, but we are starving to death. Can you please help my dad? She didn't say, get rid of my dad, give us food, please help my dad. And Jesus followed her to her home, and this is what Jesus said. He took the dad by the hand and raised him up and said, my brother man made in the image of our father God, will you arise and come with me? There had been a fire and he was asking him to help. But he said, my brother man made in the image of God, you, inside you, are God's son. Will you help me? Jesus always quickened that Christ within. And then he asked him to help rebuild some of the homes that had been burned. And the man went out like a Trojan, building and, and helping. And, and then he went to his own home and realized what an unkempt place it was. And he rebuilt it. And he never drank again. But he didn't drink because someone told him not to. He didn't drink again because he didn't need to. He found that inside him. That beautiful energy of divinity in him. All right. When we know that Christ in me, I behold the Christ in you. I behold the Christ in me. When we see that and know that, we become the most powerful created beings. We become what we are destined to become, God's child. When Jesus began his work with his own uh, people, the people of Israel, um, before that he had gone to the meeting of the sages. And the sages said, they were trying to plan how the new era of 2,000 years would go. And the sages said, man is not quite yet able to create, he can only duplicate. There will come a time in the new age when man will be able to think <coughs> enough freely so he can originate to create. And that begins when the new age is here. And this is the new age now. Jesus was 2,000 years ago. So we have evolved to the point to originate, to think, to create new, to be new, to live at a higher level. What connects us to that infinite possibility? The Christ within. 
to know that we're connected with God, to know that we can be that, that beautiful divine being. Acknowledging the Christ acknowledges, acknowledges your ability to create, acknowledges your ability to originate something new and divine. All right. We started talking about how we look at others and to perceive how our needs are met. This always limits our connection with them, doesn't it? What if we started every day asking that our Christ be fully present in our body? How different would our day look? Because we're really asking that we have a spiritual day. I ask that my Christ be fully present in my body. I want to go forward in that energy all day long. I want the Spirit to be with me. So it doesn't matter how logistically mundane or linear, left brain, logical, your work or connections might be. You're making it a spiritual experience. Does that make sense? When we call forth the Christ within any situation within me or within others, we are moving from needs to possibilities. Even if we have no further interaction with the person that we call forth their Christ to be present in, even if we have no further action, we are connected because we're connected in the oneness. I ask that your Christ in nature, I ask that Adriana's Christ in nature be fully present in her body. And I ask that my Christ in nature be fully present in my body. And in this moment we are one, and she is as powerful as I am, and she is as wise as I am, and she is as, as infinitely God-connected as I am. Whether we do anything from this moment forward matters not. And if I see her tomorrow, she tells me she originated something fabulous, I will do the dancer joy with her. Because I will celebrate that she took her light out to the world in a different way, in a new way. If you've done any counseling with me, I always ask that you call forth the Christ within the person you are at odds. If you are angry or upset or mad, you call forth the Christ within that person. So they can become the greater self they are. Does this make sense to you? Sometimes I still have human reactions to things in the world. I know you're so shocked. <laughs> but it is true. And I remember some unbelievable things were happening to someone in my world. And I do this with clients too, not to their faces. And just recently uh, there were some things where I knew somebody was trying so hard, everything was going really good, and they were getting backlash that wasn't positive. And I was starting to go, well, how could this happen? And who is backlashing you up positively? Do you hear me? Hmm, the mama bear. So I found that all I could do, rather than stay upset, was to come to my senses. And when I called forth the Christ of nature of the person that had been delivering the ill backlash, do you hear what I'm saying? It stopped. For me, completely. Oh, they're just, got, they're your child, God. Okay, they're playing in that way. I know something's happening, so, you know, you got them. I don't have to worry about them anymore. Whatever my client is experiencing, that's for them. I'll call forth their Christ nature, too. Oh, they're, this, there's a reason for this. I don't have to worry about them anymore. And then I call forth my Christ, so I don't have to worry about me anymore. Do you see? Everyone involved in that which would make me upset or make me feel injustice was occurring. And it just melts. It all melts away. <clears throat> this whole month has really been about how can we as metaphysical Christians go out and take our belief that we are children of God into our relationships across the board without lecturing people. Without You shouldn't have to say I'm a child of God to people. They should feel it in your field. You shouldn't have to go up and say, yeah, I got a really cool church, although you do. <laughs> I mean, you could if you wanted to, if I'm sure, so that's good. But do you know what I'm saying? You should be living it. How can we live that in our words and our deeds every day? And that calling the forth is the key. That's the key that Jesus gave that man at the healing fountain. You have the key 
the key of faith. Do you believe that? Do you believe that you're a child of God? Do you believe that your body will heal? The, the man on the bed, you are made in the image and likeness of God. I need your help. Okay. Do you believe that? Every one of you has really highs when you know that you know, and really deep valleys where you doubt. We all do. And when you doubt, I'm offering you a key. I now call forth my own divine, I am Christ in nature, to descend fully within my body. And I let the doubts go, because they do not serve me. And I may not know what my very next step is, and I may have to stand still in this place where I am, but I'm going to stand still as the Christ. I'm going to stand still as God's child. And I'm not going to make myself go to a space of discomfort in this world. Is this not a fabulous key? Yes. yes. And the key to your relationships with your brothers. The key to the arguing. The key to the negotiating. The key to everything. Whatever you're engaged in, get it spiritual. Make the people spiritual around you. Not by imposing your will. Just by quickening their spirit. And then we talk. And then if it doesn't work, it doesn't work. And if it does work, it works at a higher level. You see? Say, I've learned something today. And I will use it. All right, let's go with that. <laughs> Father, Mother, God, we thank you for this beautiful earth that we live on. A beautiful space where we can move and be creative and be, be filled with light. And I would invite each of you, just feel that beautiful column of light coming over you. Feel that you are held in an energy of God love. You are safe and you are at peace. And in your own heart, feel that space, the vibration of your consciousness, where you are right now. Any thoughts that might have been churning during the service? Any concerns? And just imagine you can feel that energy. And now stand in that energy and call forth your own Christ of nature to be fully present within you. And now I'll call forth my I am, my divine Christ of nature, to be fully present within me. I am God's child. Feel your body relax. Feel your focus be only on you now. And from this vantage point, this I am Christ, you can now ask, show me how to create something new for me. Flow through divine light so something wonderful can be created through me for my joy. And just feel the energy flowing through you, flowing out your heart. And it feels good. And now welcome into this space someone that you might not be in harmony with. Someone that might be an annoyance or irritant see them. Look into their eyes. Be aware of your needs from them, what you have asked of them. Just set it aside for a minute and say, I behold the Christ in you. I ask that your divine, I am Christ in nature, be fully present in your body. You are God's child. See them. Radiant, powerful, beautiful. And feel the need that you had from them just melting away for a moment. And we 
are connected in God's love. Take a breath and let them go. And feel that light of God pouring through you now. My child, my child, my beloved. When I know the Christ in me, I know God as parent. And just let that power flow through you for a moment. Let it fill every cell of your body, your heart, your chakras, all your thoughts. Just feel your gratitude. Thank you, God. And breathe and feel your awareness back to that calm of light, back to the chair that holds you. Feel your body. And when you're ready, you can gently. Did you find peace with one of your brothers and sisters? Yes. yes. Good. If you did not find peace, you know what your homework is. <laughs> <laughs> do it till you do. If we knew how truly, amazingly blessed we are to be walking on this earth at this time with these vast capacities that we have. We would be unstoppable in joy and honoring all as children of God. Opportunity is ours. Say yega.